Hello, this is Michael Osborne with WebEcator. In this video, we're going to step through the process of canceling long-running SQL commands from an ASP.NET Web Forms application. Now, this video is based on a blog entry by Yuri Galanter. Yuri agreed to let us create this video discussing his article, which is available on his blog at the URL that you see here. Okay, so let's begin by describing this scenario that we're trying to deal with. Suppose I have a, a web page, an ASP.NET page, and on that page, as it loads, what we're doing is we're making a call to a SQL server and running a query, and that query takes a long time. Now, obviously, we're going to try to optimize our queries as much as possible, but occasionally this will happen. So at some point, you, or more likely your user, will decide that We've had enough. We want to just cancel the whole thing. How do we go about gracefully canceling that SQL query so that we can come back to the page? Well, there is a way. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to build our SQL command, and then we're going to add it into a shared in VB or static list. Now, if the command is successful, we just take it out of the list. But if it takes too long, what we're going to do is we're going to issue an AJAX call from the client page and say cancel that command that's stored in that list. So in order to do this, the first thing we need to do is we need to build a class that's going to actually contain our command. Now, really simple little class, and I have one here. It's called my running command.vb, and you'll notice it has just two properties. One is a page name, and the other contains a SQL command. And now that we've built the container for our command, the next thing we need is a manager class. Now the manager class, again, is very straightforward. I'm just going to scroll down here. This is called my running command manager. And you'll notice, again, very simple. We just have three methods. One that allows us to add a command, one that allows us to remove a command, and one that allows us to cancel our command. Now if you examine the code, you will see again that this is a very simple class. Essentially all we're doing here is we're maintaining an internal list object of type running command, a generic list. And in each of the methods, essentially what we're doing is we're either adding or removing or canceling commands from that list. Now we also have this private shared variable locker, which is what we use to do our synchronization. In other words, lock that code so that as these asynchronous occurrences happen, they don't, we don't end up with race conditions. So at this point, we have built a class to hold our command. We've also built a command manager to actually manage instances of that class. In other words, add them and remove them to the list, that sort of thing. The next thing we need is some way for the client to communicate back to the server that it wants to cancel a command. The simplest way to do this is to simply build a web API controller. And in fact, we have one here called the cancel loading controller. Now, if you look at cancel loading, you'll notice that most of the methods are just kind of the default implementation that we get from the template when we create a controller. But the one we care about, the one we're interested in, is the post value method that receives an instance of the running command manager and calls the cancel command. This is what allows us to actually say, I would like to cancel this uh, command that has been running. So at this point, we have all the plumbing in place. The only thing remaining is to actually leverage that plumbing. In other words, build a form that will create a command and then cancel it. So what I have here, first of all, is a form called dashboard.aspx. Now I want you to notice that in the markup, in the code behind the form, we have a script function called cancel loading. And what this does is an AJAX call, and you'll notice it's a post call. We're calling that post method. And the URL is API cancel loading. And we're passing in the form ID using a JSON stringify. We're also specifying that the content is application JSON. And notice we've got a success and a failure function. On the success, what we're saying is function executed successfully. On error, we're uh, writing to the console log the response.txt. Also, you'll notice in this form, it has two subforms. They're iframes. And each one has a form loaded event handler, which hides a little image in the form. Let's actually go look at the design of this form in split view. Um, actually, let's just go to design view. And you'll notice essentially what we have here on the form are two iframes. And each frame is loaded with a form. And there is a cancel iframe button that we can use to actually call the cancel method on the form. So let's go take a look at one of these forms. I'm going to open form one. Form one, very simple, very straightforward. All we have in there is a label with some text. Now, if you actually look at the code behind form one, and let me go ahead and open that up real quick. 
you'll see that in our page load event handler what we do is we declare a connection and a command the connection is just using a local database a uh, very simple command the command in this case does a wait for delay of 25 seconds and then once we've constructed our connection our command we open the connection and we call the running command manager and we add the command passing the name of the form that it's on and the command itself then we do a try and we do an execute non-query and we set our text to command executed successfully finally the last thing we do assuming it all ran was we remove the command from the uh, list or the, from the running command manager now the only remaining piece of the puzzle we need to see at this point is back in the dashboard uh, form and you'll notice in the dashboard form we have a button for each of the forms called cancel form and essentially what it's doing is on click it's calling the cancel loading function that JavaScript function we saw, saw a moment earlier passing in the value form 1 or form 2 which is telling it which uh, of the commands to go ahead and cancel so now we have all the pieces and parts in place let's go ahead and test it out I'm going to run this just using standard Internet Explorer and once it loads up you'll see that I have to a form containing two subforms two iframes and if I say cancel iframe here you'll notice it tells me an error occurred operation was canceled by the user now if I wait for the full 25 seconds the second iframe will eventually pop up and say operation completed successfully and in fact there it is it says the command completed successfully because again we're not retrieving any data all we're doing is a wait for command so it works just fine so at this point what we've done is we've added a command into a list object and we have successfully called and said execute that command and then called back and said go ahead and cancel that command and we did all this asynchronously using an ajax call okay i'd like to again thank yuri galanter for the inspiration for this video be sure and check out his blog at the URL you see here for more articles related to ASP.NET. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it.